our second year engineering technology students were given the project to create a gravity light. So the gravity light uh, generates electricity uh, from the energy of a falling weight. So you can see this is their this is their structure. It's pretty tall, mounted on the floor, and it is operating right now. There's a a a weight concrete cylinder as the weight, and it's falling, but it's falling very slowly. And then over here, they have a collection of LED lights uh, that are being lit uh, by running a motor backwards. So they were given uh, the specifications of making sure that the, the weight would fall uh, greater than 12 minutes so that the light would stay lit for more than 12 minutes. And they were asked to have a light that would allow somebody to read a book in an otherwise dark room and also to have uh, have it designed so that um, it's safe and will not be subject to tipping over or falling. So there were three students uh, who worked on this project. They had 72 hours over a period of 12 weeks and their, their two initial decisions were number one to use a chain drive mechanism and also, they decided on a structure that was that was floor mounted. The, the other option would be to to have the mechanism hanging from the ceiling. So this is looking down uh, from the top. You can see the the large falling weight, and then uh, there's also a counterweight just to keep tension on the, on the uh, loose end of the chain to prevent skipping of the links. So here's what you'll see up top. All right. So on the on the other side of this large 60 tooth sprocket is the sprocket um, that the chain is wrapped around uh, for the falling weight. And they decided on three. Now this is they tested 25 different um, uh, types of layouts and this this was what they finally decided on. So there are, there are three shafts mounted on ball bearings and they picked a gear ratio that enables the the weight to fall very slowly but the motor to turn fast enough to generate electricity. And there were You'll notice several of the sprockets are green. That's because they decided to go ahead and, and use the 3D printer to print uh, a, a few of the sprockets. And also they printed uh, the spacer uh, to align the, the motor with that third shaft. So they used a uh, microwave uh, motor. So this is the, the data says um, 60 hertz, 6 RPM, 2.8 watts. Okay. Okay, so for the wiring, so the, the uh, microwave motor uh, puts out, in this case, of course, the it's running backwards. Typically, you'd be supplying AC electricity to the microwave motor. This is running running backwards so it's producing AC electricity but they decided to use LED lights which prefer uh, DC electricity so in their in their wiring they have um, a rectifier which converts the AC to DC electricity and also several capacitors to smooth out the delivery of the DC electricity uh, to the LED lights. And then they also uh, connected the, the light to a very long cable so that anybody using this can, can reposition the light in a variety of, of places for use. And then they also decided to 
uh, use a put a cover over the top which can be folded back for any kind of maintenance or repair or uh, replacement. Okay, so that's their gravity light. If they had more time, there are other improvements that they would make, but um, it runs pretty well. The, uh, the falling weight is a concrete cylinder. Uh, one of the students works at a concrete testing lab so this was one of their leftover uh, concrete cylinders that wasn't going to go through any compression testing. So the weight is about uh, 21 or 22 pounds. So you can see that the, the weight is very close to, um, to making contact with the floor. And their run times are about 13 and a half minutes, which makes their goal of 12 minutes. And then what happens next is this, this motor will run just as well backwards as forward. So what they'll do after the, the weight hits the floor is they'll take the big weight off, put it on the end of the chain, which right now has the counterweight, and then put the counterweight on this lower end and then just restart it. So the transition to the next run uh, is, is pretty simple.